My elementary school had something called the Spring Fling. It was a talent show put on for the whole school and their parents. Now, I wasn't even thinking of entering. I mean, I didn't play an instrument or anything like that, so I just ignored it. But then one day, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Sheckler, asked me why I wasn't participating in it. Well, why? What would I do? Why, your impressions, of course. I could do impressions of different people. You know, I never considered it a talent. It, it was just something I could do. And for the most part, it came pretty easy to me. I would do people like um, Howard Cosell or Jimmy Carter. And the only one that I can still do, which is Paul Lynn. Uh, now, if you don't know who Paul Lynn is, he, um, he was the center square in the Hollywood squares. Um, he was Samantha's Uncle Arthur and Bewitched. He was Templeton the Rat in the original Charlotte's Web. You know, I, I always loved his voice because he was always laughing when he talked. You know, even if what he was saying wasn't funny. Oh, that's so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran home to talk to Mom about it, and she just looked at me and said, Bobby, you know I think you can do anything you put your mind to. Well, that was really the only encouragement I needed. I ran upstairs and started working. Now, I never wanted my father to find out about the show, but he did. He was a a huge ex-Marine with USMC tattoos on each arm. He told me it stood for Uncle Sam's Misguided Children. He was a well-built guy when he was younger, but now had a comb over and looked a lot like Dom DeLuise, but he was still very powerful. He was the opposite of my mom in almost all respects. He was the center of attention wherever he went. He was strong, smoked two packs a day, and he never had a positive thing to say about me or my mother. We never got along. He always thought of me as the thing that ruined his life, and he was never afraid to tell me that. He came into the room while I was rehearsing. What are you doing? Your mom tells me you're going to be in a show. Why the hell would you set yourself up to be laughed at? Hell, I'll laugh at you can save yourself the trouble. Because I was listening to what you were doing. That sucks. <laughs> Hope you're better than that when you get up there on that stage and all those people are staring at you, just waiting for you to screw up. And you will. You're just not that good. Come on, dinner's ready. Dinner was unusually quiet that night. Luckily for me, television is my great escape, and tonight is Battle of the Network Stars. I love that show. I mean, you got to see celebrities as real people, or at least as real as they'll let you see them. It was while watching that show that the idea came. Howard Cosell was interviewing the celebrities after each match. I mean, that was it. That's what I could do. Before, I was just introducing the celebrity and then doing the impression. Now what I would do is have Howard Cosell introduce them. <gasps> the idea surged through me like a shock. I didn't even finish watching the program. I ran upstairs and started working. I thought about how great it would be if Howard Cosell was just a regular man on the street interviewing celebrities. I mean, he would introduce the celebrity, the celebrity would come out and say, you know, whatever they were gonna say, and then Howard would come out and introduce the next one. Maybe even throwing in a one-liner about how great or how horrible the last celebrity was. Man, I went to bed on cloud nine that night. But when I woke up the next morning, all the energy and the good feelings of the idea were gone. And in this place were feelings of fear and doubt. I mean, why would anyone care about some kid who could sound like Jimmy Carter or Elvis? I mean, hell, you can see it on, that on The Tonight Show. I mean, Rich Little's on there all the time, and he's much better than I am. I decided to take my name off the list to be in the show. But when I got to school that day, I was met with a small surprise. All the people who were going to be in the Spring Fling were listed on a huge billboard at the front entrance of the school. I mean, how could I back out now? There was my name in big letters, number 23 out of 23. <laughs> By the time I got home from school that day, my nerves were shot. And when my mom asked me what was wrong, the floodgates opened and I was crying in my mother's arms, telling her all about my fears and doubts. She waited a few moments, looked me right in the eye and said, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. You have got to do it for the people that are going to love what you can do. Now, I have always been proud of your talent. Now, you show them why. Well, the big night finally came and the auditorium was packed. Mr. Shistatan, the school principal, was standing at the stage entrance. And while one person was on stage, the next person was waiting in the wings to go on. They called my name and I was standing backstage watching some kid from another grade doing a ventriloquist act. I was watching his lips move. And somehow, I got courage from it. They called my name and I hit the stage. Now, I would love to tell you that every word out of my mouth was gold. The truth is, I have no idea what I said. 
All I know is that they were laughing. And they weren't laughing at me, but at what I was doing. Towards the end of the routine, I looked down at my mom who was sitting in the front row and she gave me a big thumbs up sign. A signal that my mom still uses to this day to tell me that she enjoyed the show. They cheered. They cheered for me. It was one of the highest highs I've ever had. When we all came out to take our final bow, some of my classmates were up on the balcony and they stood up and started stomping their feet and chanting, Bob, Bob, Bob. Well, I stepped up front and took another bow. <laughs> it was at that moment I knew in my heart I wanted to be an actor. It also helped me realize that my father was wrong. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I had just spit right in his face.